from the world of the headquarters of the McNeil Film Studio, here is Professor McNeil. Here we are today. We're going to talk about price takers. This is a firm in pure competition. So the first of our market types is pure competition. Many small sellers, free entry and exit, homogeneous product. When we talk about this, when we talk about how a firms in pure competition interact, how they behave, I tell five stories. The first story is the price and output determination. This is a situation in which I give you a firm's uh, cost, either curves or the table of their, their, of their costs, and then give you any price, and you tell me what quantity the firm will produce, what price it will charge, what will be the profit per unit, and what will be total profit. So that's the first issue. When we talk about what quantity, there's a rule. You produce the quantity where marginal revenue equals marginal cost, and that means you, that's a translation of the greater rule which says when you make a decision you do all of the activities for which the marginal benefit exceeds the marginal cost and none for which the marginal cost exceeds the marginal benefit. So in fact you have maximized your well-being or your profit in this case when you push the uh, activity, the output in this case to where the marginal cost is equal to the marginal revenue. What price the rule is from the demand curve. Demand always sets the price. The price of a Prius is determined by the demand. The price of a house in Irvine versus uh, Bolivia is determined by demand. So price always comes from the demand. And in the price taker I instance, it's not a particularly important question because the price is determined by the market. What profit per unit? There's a formula for profit per unit. You take the price and you subtract the average cost and that's how much, on average, a firm will make on each unit. Uh, produced and sold. And finally, what is total profit? You calculate total profit depending on what numbers you have. If you have the profit per unit and you have the quantity produced, then you multiply them together and that will give you your total profit. Or, if, if in another instance you can get total revenue and total cost easier, you simply subtract uh, total cost from total revenue and that will give you your total profit. So that's the first one and we'll do that in the next video. The second uh, question is, what is the firm's supply curve? And the answer is, it's marginal cost above average variable cost. Uh, in short, the firm will not produce at a price below its average variable cost because it would lose more by producing than by shutting down. That's another uh, video as well. What is the market or industry supply? It's the horizontal sum of all individual supply curves. Um, what happens in the long run? That's the third story. And in the long run, if you're a firm in pure competition, you can expect zero economic profit because if there are profits, there will be entry by other firms. If there are economic profits, that is, profits above normal, it will attract other firms into this industry in the long run. The long run here means time enough for, for new firms to come in and start producing or to exit. So we've, we've shifted from the short run here to the long run. And if there, are, if there is profit, firms will enter. And when firms enter, because market supply is the horizontal sum of all individual supply, when new firms enter, the supply goes up and the price goes down until there's no more reason for firms to enter. That's where uh, price is exactly equal to op, uh, average cost. And only normal, not economic profits exist. If there's a uh, loss, then firms have an incentive to exit. That causes the supply in the market to shift left, and the price goes up until it's just equal to average cost again, and there's no profit, no loss. So in the third story is in the long run, we can expect zero economic profits. The fourth story is, what is the purpose of profits to the individual and to the society? They're different. From the, from the individual's point of view, why do individuals seek profit? And the answer is, because, because, wait, put that cell phone down. Wait, let me finish this text. No. Okay. Sorry for the interruption. Um, what is the purpose of profits to the individual? Uh, so that they can get wealthy and do whatever they do. We'll talk about that more about that later. But the purpose of profits to the society is very different. The purpose of, of profits from the society's point of view is to allocate resources to their highest valued uses 
and to give people an incentive to move those resources that they control from lower valued uses to higher valued uses. Uh, that's the fourth story. The fifth story is uh, deals with the efficiency issues. We're going to look at both productive efficiency, that is producing the goods with the lowest resource costs, and allocative efficiency, putting the resources into the correct areas. Not too much in one area, not too, mu uh, too little in uh, that area, but just right to maximize the well-being of the society by using the resources optimally, to out by allocating them optimally. Okay, those are the five stories, and the full explanation comes in subsequent videos. Bye.